and welcome to my Xbox and me episode. I don't know. Uh, uh, Crash? Uh, 345. Thank you very much. Uh, I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside the one and only Two Fresh Crash. Crash, how are you? Uh, it's 335. 4, 435. 435, not 345. 435. <laughs> you suck. You suck. This is bad. I, I, I did it. Er- look, I, I changed the number earlier because you guys keep complaining about it. And in my head, it was 345. And then I just looked at it because I'm like, I think that's wrong. And it's 435. It's 435. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you got the numbers to, uh, together this week. I do appreciate it. Uh, and the return of the Mac is Mr. Despawn. How are you? I uh, can see that it is also 435. I'm, but I'm good. Yes. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. And uh, Matt's here. <clears throat> I'm back. What a, <laughs> what a lovely surprise for you all. I, I imagine the audio listeners are like really weighing it up in their head. Like, is it a Matt episode? It's like a thirty yeah, percent shot. Is Matt it's here? Is Matt dead? Yeah. And most of them are probably wishing I wasn't. No, you know? no, no that's man. not true. That's not true at all. I will let they you know you. right now. From from my perspective, we miss you. When you're not here, we miss oh, you a lot. I love talking shit way. about you when you're not here. I'm not I'm, gonna I've lie. Noticed. I've noticed, motherfuckers. It's better because Matt <laughs> listens, so it's like, it's That's, not like, yes. empty, like yeah. talking shit. Like it's going to reach ears. Yeah, yeah you should, yeah, you should yeah, never yeah. have told us that you listen back. That's the problem. You should never have told yeah. us. He wants to know He wants to know about the inside jokes, if there is anything. He's like, I can't miss out. I don't want to miss miss out on something. So, well, you know. How's everyone doing? Everyone good? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm good. I'm glad. I've got nothing else to. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. To, uh, very well, thank you. Thank to you. elaborate, I am very well, thank you. I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty and um, popping off, as the kids say. You definitely no, have been definitely. popping off. We did a live stream <laughs> no. together. You are dog doo doo. I am. Good. I am. Hey, sometimes my KD was positive, and that's a win for me. Do you think there's a chance that I'm no longer the worst Call of Duty player on the podcast? No, no, you're still terrible. I no, can, I can no, still no, hit my shots. You shot. suck. You Why? suck. Why? Do you remember we played Warzone? I'm the best Warzone player. I'm the best Call of Duty player here, period. Not even a question. It's not even up for debate. I'm thinking a 1v, 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 1 in Rust. What are you? Well, Crash, are we, we going to pretend that you've even got the game? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> great point. It's a great God, point. I've installed, <laughs> <I've> installed the game. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> okay. Three different machines. I got and I've yet to boot it up. Yet to boot. It. Well, you're more than welcome to join me anytime you want. I can help carry you. I carried despawn to some wins. Yeah, he did. I was top of the leaderboard. Yeah, he was. I was. I was most surprised than you, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I don't have it's to like of, it, but yeah. Yeah, it's kind of kind of annoying because honestly, I wasn't interested in going back to COD really until then, we did the stream yeah. and now i'm playing cod again and i'm like oh yeah it's all come back like you see like two weeks ago i was like skill gap is so bad i'm terrible but no it's all back i'm very good so like cancelling buddy hopping everywhere pop 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 and i'm playing hardcore forget uh, core that's that's my thing i learn if i play hardcore i'm absolutely fine if i play mm-hmm. core i'm dog shit that's because hardcore is a dog shit game mode again coming from the guy who doesn't own the game Dog, hardcore has always been a dog shit game mode. Yeah, okay. Until the day I die, be a dog shit game mode. Sure, sure, sure. If you say so, mate. If you say so. If you didn't, though, this is My Xbox and Me, our weekly Xbox podcast, right here on youtube.com slash My Xbox and Me and all podcast services. We have a full house this week, and I'm excited to get into it. Big week this week. Uh, we have got the game of the game of the, the game of the, the game awards nominees. Um, Nailed it. Ah, uh, quick question. Yeah, mate. What's more important, the Game Awards or um, the Golden Joysticks? The Golden Joysticks. Well, what Obviously, ones, what ones more joysticks. prestigious? Yeah, I totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. hundred percent. I... I mean, look, the, the, one of the major differences is the Golden Joysticks mostly is uh, fan voted for. Mm. And so the first thing Crash said to me pre-podcast was, "How did Mortal Kombat win Best Online Game of the Year?" And I went, yeah. "Blame the public, mate. Blame <laughs> the public. That's why." So um, Wild. there you Wild. go. But now we can blame Jeff Keighley for all these bad choices. It, well, well, we'll, we'll get into we'll, we'll get go. into that. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. Uh, shout out to Patreon producer Aaron God as well as per usual. We do appreciate you, my friend. Boys, what I think we should do is we should go onto the Game Awards website. We should go through every single category, and I think we should discuss what we would vote for for my Xbox and me. Okay. Okay. I think we are a panelist together. We are a team mm-hmm. together. And we have to decide on what we will vote for as a team. 
Interesting. This is not going to go wrong at all. This is this is not a what we want to win. This is not a um, you know what, what sh- we th- it, it, what should win. It's down to there's an argument for everybody here. Okay. We have to come to an agreement for what we are voting for. And is it just majority rules? As in, if Pixar picks one person and Despawn picks another person, but me and Crash agree, therefore me and Crash have two votes, therefore mine and Crash's vote wins. You have to uh, convince me to come on your side. Oh, like, so it's basically just a dictatorship and then fix it aside. Uh, I don't do well in dictatorships. No. Actually, you've been my friend for how long? You've been <laughs> oh, you've been no, a you should not do well in dictatorships. For, for you know what? I don't do well in this. <laughs> no, all jokes aside, no, yeah, uh, majority rules. Majority, right, cool. majority rules. Yeah, definitely, rules. definitely. All right, we're starting with content creator of the year. <laughs> for a streamer or content creator who has made an important and positive impact on the community in 20. 20- 23. I am about to butcher a lot of names, so here we go. Uh, I am Mouse. People make games. Quackity? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's go. One nil for the dyslexic. Uh, now, sp- Spring? No, sure. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, right. Cypher PK, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nailed it. Okay. Five I'll, five. T- I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right now. I've only heard of one of these content creators. <laughs> Crash, which one have I heard of? Oh, uh, Cypher PK. Sure. Well right. done, Chris. You know me. See, Chris, you know me so well. You know me so well. Matt, um, which one would you vote for? I, I know none of these. I, I recognize the name Quackity, but I don't mm-hmm. know where from. Um, so I will defer and not vote on this. No, but you, that's not how this works. You, no, 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 no. Oh. You've, got, you've got to look at these photos and you need to judge these people on who you think is the best content creator based on their photo. All you right, have to have them. Wait, wait, wait. Before you do, though, Crash will know all the creators. So, Crash, tell me from. I know. <laughs> I know two of the creators. One of them I've heard of. Quackity, I've heard of. Don't okay, really know him. Okay. I don't know what he plays or what he does. Iron Mouse, I vaguely know. Don't really know much about her either. I know she's a VTuber or whatever. Uh huh. Uh-huh. People make okay, games, no clue. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sprain, no clue. Cypher PK, I know because of Fortnite is really the only reason I know. Is Sprain the, is the Spanish streamer that everyone goes crazy over? Uh, I could be, I could, I could be, be, I could be wrong, I could be wrong. Right and Despawn I'm definitely doesn't sure. know. Despawn barely knows half the time we're talking about on, I'm on stream and he's like, he's like, I don't know who this is. So he definitely doesn't know any of these people. So people make games, yeah, I haven't got a clue. Yeah, see, I know yeah, for a, a fact. So the only one I know on this list is Cypher and he's a Fortnite content creator. Okay. Cool. So, Sounds like we're voting for Cypher. That's the only one I would vote for because I know the content he makes. Um, but other than that, yeah, he did a video, one video that I watched where he, um, had a pro play on his computer, but he was pretending that he was playing okay. and then he walked into his friend's room who is playing against and was like, yo, what's up, dude? And it was, I really found the video funny. So he gets my vote. So okay. Simple as. There we go. Crash, Crash is doing research. I can see it. Uh, I was trying to figure out if Spring was who you mentioned, and I'm not entirely sure. Uh, you you voted for Cipher Cipher PK. Um, Stop playing with your mic. I, I, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> You're beating up the mic. I'm cr- that's on Crash. That ain't on me. All right, I'm not taking responsibility. That is on me. Who are you uh, voting? He's still doing it. I'm gonna give it for. I'm gonna give it to Iron Mouse. Okay. I've seen a lot of stuff about them online. Okay, Matt. I'll go Cypher. That's what? sexist. I'm just saying that. What the I'm hell? Not, what? Joking, Again, against cartoons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, solely for the fact that he's also wearing a red hoodie, I'm giving it to Cypher. Perfect. We go with Cypher on this one, everybody. Is we someone making a note of this, by the way? This one. Uh, well, I'm voting, yeah. Okay, you're actually voting. Sweet. I am. Sweet. I am. All right, next, next up. up. Most anticipated game. Recognizing an announced game that has uh, demonstrated, illustrated, illustrated potential to push the gaming medium forward. Interesting. I didn't know that's what this stood for. Uh, the uh, nominees are Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hades II, Lacquer Dragon Infinite Wealth, Star Wars Outlaws, and Tekken 8. Matt, I'll start with you, mate. Uh, sorry, I was just looking up what won last year, uh, which okay. was Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which is interesting. Um, because I kind of looked at this list and went, is next year going to be a bit of a weak year for games? No. no. None of these particularly ring my bell. 
You need to get a new bell. Interesting. Um, so but a, look, bell? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I've never, I've never said that phrase for my entire life. I don't even know if it's a real thing. Um, but like this year, I, like I think we mentioned before, like I've eaten so well. Like, oh my god, I like my my top five this year could change every morning I wake up just based on my mood. Um, it's incredible. And then I look at these five and I'm like, really? Is this is this what we're all excited for next year? Okay. Yes, extremely. Yeah. Out of these. Uh, probably Hades too. Okay. Crash. I, I mean, this is actually like a really tough one because there's four of these games that I actually am interested in. One kind of, then three I'm really interested in, and one that I just don't care about. The one you don't, I don't care, care about, about Star, Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the one I'm kind of interested in, Hades, and the other three are all games that I'm very interested in. It's going to go to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth at the end of the day, though. You're damn fucking right. It's crashing. There's no other answer. There's no goddamn other answer. I'm sorry, Xbox players. I understand that you don't understand the love of this game if you've never experienced it on another platform. But I am so excited. It is ridiculous how excited I am. And is I just I don't know, man. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, Crash. It's dope to see the infinite wealth is uh, on this list, though. I will say mm -hmm. that. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. D spawn. Oh man, if so, the answer is obviously Final Fantasy VII. But if Final Fantasy VII wasn't on this list and it was something completely different, Hades comes a very close second. Like that I mean, game. Oh, interesting. The original was so good. I loved it so my, much. More stuff about despawn. My order would have went Final Fantasy, uh, Like a Dragon, Star Wars, Tekken, Hades. Oh, okay. Hades Probably all Star the way at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was definitely Final Fantasy, Hades, Tekken, Star Wars, and Like a Dragon. Have you, have you I'm not, played I've, the first Hades? Yeah, fix. Oh, yeah, I yeah. played that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah I played just, that, just didn't, didn't like it. Played it on a sponsor stream, actually, yeah. for something I did for Game Pass once. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, to, just to put it out there, just because Like a Dragon is at the bottom of that list doesn't mean I, I'm not excited for it. Like I'm excited for all these games. But yeah, uh, it's just this is a good list for me. I, and yeah. to answer your question, Matt, I don't not like Hades. It's just that gameplay loop has never gotten me ever with any game. I just I played what was before Hades. There's one that was that was that came out Dead similar. Cells. Dead, Cells, Dead Cells played that as well. It just wasn't. There's just that loop isn't for me. Yeah, They're just roguelikes um, in general. Yeah, yeah, rogue, exactly. Roguelikes are just yeah, not for me. But we agree. Final Fantasy. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Final only fantasy? one who's out of that is is Matt. Okay, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. It's we all at the bottom of that. We all know mascot bad takes, so it's fine. Are you Matt? Uh, yeah. yeah. Either that or like a dragon. I don't know. Fifty-fifty. Okay. Uh, next up is best adaptation. Recognize an outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment medium. You have Castlevania, Nectron, no, Nectron, Nocturne. Nocturnal, thank Nocturne. Nocturne. I see that Just now. Nocturne, yeah. Thank you. Gran Turismo. I oh, know. I was trying to figure out how I'm going to get there in my head if I see it again. <laughs> uh, Gran Turismo, The Last of Us, the Super Mario movie, and Twisted Metal. Um, I'll kick off. I've only seen one of these, unfortunately. Which um, is Mario? Which is Mario, yes. The only one that I've seen. Uh, Last of oh, Us is 100%. Sure. It's on the list. It's just, I just... Dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm very I'm very excited to watch it at some point, but I just have such limited time. The problem is that's such a dark, dire show. And I'll be mm. honest, after I've done a long day's work, I just want to watch comedies all of the time. So anything that oh. makes me laugh and puts me in a good mood, that's what I want to watch. I actually uh, started watching uh, Mario again on the plane when I was on my way home from America. Nice. I was like, damn, this is this is really good. I really it like is it. Good. It is a really great like film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Credit to this list, I'm pretty sure like four of these are pretty well received. I think yeah. all of them were pretty was well received. Was Grand well, well received? I didn't follow that too much. I, I know think it was like fine. Me. It is interesting that the description on this award is a creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment medium. Gran Turismo doesn't. Twisted Metal, I don't really doesn't. think does. Why I mean, does Gran Turismo? Do? Super Mario doesn't even really. Because there's no there's no story in the Gran Turismo game that they're adapting faithfully. You realize that it's literally based on a true story, right? No, it's a true story. Yeah, yeah but it's but not, not the it's game. Not the game. Yeah, I get what Matt's saying. Yeah. Mm, 
it's not yeah, faith, it's, it's not. using the game it's as a telling, yeah. it's faithfully telling the story of what happened though in Good using the medium Gran Turismo no, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, no, putting yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, just, no, putting no, I agree again. Yes, like, creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment medium. You got to put in some work to I adapt. Guess, to I guess, I guess, medium. semantics, but yeah, I get what Matt's saying. Yeah. yeah, I'm being semantics. semantics I don't want to agree with that. Yeah, not a word, but yeah. I guess anyway, so. there's only one right answer in a similar way that Final Fantasy was the only right answer for the last one. It's Last of Us. Is born? Agreed. Just interject here, boys. I don't want to keep saying your names. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, 100% it is. Uh, oh, again, close second to Mario, but yeah, Last of Us is like, it was such a work of art. Uh, finally getting video game TV right. Oh, so good. 100%. Yeah, I mean, wow. it's, it's for sure. <laughs> for sure, Last of Us. Okay. Well, I haven't watched Mario's it. Not like, off. Mario's not off by that much, to be honest. No. Um, I I think the thing with Mario for me was I was so ready to hate on it because of the voices, mm -hmm. and yeah. it made so, and it made such good sense in the world where I was like, oh, okay, I really like this. So, yeah, no, I um, I yeah, I defer, I defer. I haven't seen it, so I believe you will. I believe you will. Last of Us is our vote, I guess. Ugh. We're a terrible Xbox podcast. Horrible. Good point. Good point. There was nothing Xbox there on there, was there? No. no. Um, Halo TV show, unfortunately, was the part. <laughs> yeah, that was number six. That was number six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little bit, little bit. Uh, next up is best multiplayer game uh, for outstanding online multiplayer uh, gameplay and design, including co-op and massively multiplayer experiences, uh, irrespective of game genre or platform. Uh, you have Baldur's Gate Three, Diablo Four. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you, Ivy. Your Roman numerals, Party Animals, Street Fighter Six, and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Not can I just say, don't get me wrong, like I'm looking at this list, some amazing games on this list. None of them scream multiplayer to me. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. except for one. Which one the party animals, right? Street Fighter Six. That game is multiplayer. When you play online, you play a multiplayer game. No, yeah. I, no, understand. So then I get, except for two, then. Okay. If I, really I think, that. you know, it's interesting that we talk about this on Xbox podcast because Baldur's Gate is still not on Xbox because of the multiplayer. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. should that really affect its kind of worth in this category? I don't know. But I do think there's like an interesting thing of like the execution of multiplayer in that game is brilliant. Oh, it's the best. It's allowed so many more people to experience that game that would probably have been very daunted by it before and probably got a massive amount of people into D D that would never have done it before yeah um but so yeah that at, would be my vote at that point are you talking more so about the game itself as opposed to the multiplayer factor of the game when you're talking getting people into D D and things like that no, because I, because I think there are people, there are a lot of people who are probably playing this with their partner who doesn't normally play games. Like, it's it's mm. captured that audience. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Fix, Stop that. Fix, just yeah. raising his hand and then kind of thinking <laughs> about it uh, for the audio <laughs> listeners. Um, but yeah, like, those people who would never have normally picked up this game are playing this game and finding a love for games in this genre and D&D &D and all these things. Um, because having somebody more experienced next to you who's more familiar with either D&D &D or video games is a nice sort of gateway in. Um, so well, it would be my vote. What I'll say is, Baldur's Gate is what, it's the most next-gen experience multiplayer game I've ever played. Like, the pure fact is that you can go off and pretty much do your own story. Yeah, there is going to be a, a circle where you'll come back together at certain moments, but that is literally how me and Haley play, which is, you take two members of our party, I'm taking a member of our party, you go off, I'll scream for help when I need it. And then you come and, and that that is something that is very much feels brand new to me. It feels like no experience I've ever had in my life before, if I'm being totally honest. It is so magical that she can go and talk to NPCs. I can go and talk to NPCs. We can be at the total opposite ends of the map and still I can I can teleport back to camp. I have to bring her with me. I can go like those sort of things that are very. I'm very much waiting. You were at the start. I was very much waiting for the game to be like, 
and now I'll wait at the door for every party member to be ready. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, 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 go on. Yeah. You want to walk in? You want to walk into this this uh, this house where there are five bad guys and fire on your own? Feel free. You're gonna get your ass kicked, but feel free. Yeah. And and I think that's the magic of the multiplayer for me, which is like, it's it feels weird because I'm talking about all the things that make it a single player experience, but it's not. It's that living, breathing world that can just carry on for me. For me, it's definitely Baldur's Gate. But yeah, yeah, you're all wrong. It's pie animals, clearly, right? Right. Right? No. I mean, there's an argument no. for it. For there sure. Is, there is definitely an argument for it. I mean, but... yeah, but no. Uh, the answer is definitely Baldur's Gate 3. I like to play Devil's Advocate. Party Animals is a solely multiplayer game, and it's probably the best example of that on this list. But the experience that Baldur's Gate gives you uh, in a multiplayer setting is, yeah, like you say, it is truly next gen. There's nothing really quite like it outside a full-on MMO. Uh, and yeah. So I, yeah, 100% I'm voting for Baldur's Gate on this one. The biggest problem Baldur's Gate has, right, for me is the fact that I'm annoyed that you can't join my my game mm. right now. I'm annoyed yeah. that you can't join my game right now and make a new character yeah. and, and be level zero. I would love to have it so it's, I can make up the D&D sto- the story on my own, which is like, we've picked you up off of a path mm-hmm. down the road and we want you to join our camp. I wish that was an option. Um, but yeah, it's 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 remarkable. Go on, Crash. Yeah. yeah um, I, I mean, I, ultimately, I think I'm, I'm with you guys on this uh, for sure out of this list. As much as I would love to be like, not nah, Street Fighter 6, you guys are bugging. Uh, Baldur's Gate, for sure. Um, based off their description. Not what I would normally consider a multiplayer game, which we talked about. Um, but for sure, yeah. Baldur's Gate just does, like, that is some of the most fun I've had playing games with other people in such a long time that it'd be hard to deny Baldur's Gate that. It's, you, we all know on this podcast, I am very much old games old. Mm-hmm. I will play through Baldur's Gate multiple times. I know that already. Like, yeah. it, it's so good. So yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, next up, sorry, go on. I was going to say, like, just multiplayer alone for Baldur's Gate, like, the options that you've got to play through that game multiple times is, I think, what makes it special as well. Like, you could definitely play as a dickhead character all the way through in one run. You could be the paragon of goodness through the other one. Uh, It basically gives you the promise that Mass Effect made many years ago with the the Paragon and Renegade system. Uh, I think we're going to talk about Baldur's Gate a lot more. I think we might. All right, yeah, let's (laughs) move on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next up is best sports slash racing game. I really wish they won't keep putting these together, but mm. whatever. Um, for the best traditional or and non traditional sports and racing game, first up was EAFC um, 24, F1 23, Forza Motorsport, Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbocharged, and the Crew Motorfest. I've played three out of these five experiences. I get my vote out of the way. Go for it. Uh, Hot Wheels. You played it? I played none of these games. I'm probably (laughs) probably Okay. Okay. Respect. Feel it. Um, I've only played one. I've only played Forza and Mm -hmm. literally at the launch event that we went to. That's my entire uh, time with it. I mean, I beat both of you during that event and crowned myself as uh, my Xbox Me's Forza champion and therefore I'm never going to touch that game ever again. Um, I'm surprised not to see the Lego game in here, though. They brought out a Lego open world game this this year that was really well received. Oh, it's, is it like it's a racing game. Okay. It's, it's a, oh, it's a oh I know what you mean. Racer. Your Lego drive. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. one. Yeah. 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 It was really well received. Um, but it's not in here. Not well enough. So I would guess I would vote for Forza, but I equally, I'm happy to not vote at all. Baseball. Um, as I've only played one of these games, I played it a little bit more than Matt. Uh, I did have a few more sessions at home. I would say on personal because i've seen these other games as well i think i'd rather give this to the crew i think the crew just seems more fun as a video game on a technical level alone if we're if we're basing it on a technical level i think fars is probably the most beautiful thing on this list but the crew comes in close and it still has that fun arcade feel to it uh that makes actually playing the game interesting um so kind of would say the crew over Forza. I thought so. I mean, Sorry, I'm probably our designated sports guy on yeah. the on the on no. the channel. I've again, I played a lot of FIFA, played a lot. Well, played an, enough for, uh, Formula One to have an opinion. 
Um, same with Matt. I only played the Forza that we played. Um, never really been a Forza motorsport guy. And then obviously I'm paid to play the crew um, and also played it in my spare time. If we're talking about the best experience that I had would be the crew. Um, the modes that they've added to add it for it. across all these games other than probably Hot Wheels, that's the most casual game on here from someone from a casual point of view. Mm -hmm. um, if I was talking about my... Formula One is just a fantastic game. Like, it's a game that, obviously, if you're not into Formula One, you're not going to care, obviously. But what they have done with the Formula One series and the single player and things like that, it is it's so, so good. Um, EA Sports FC is a step in the right direction for, FIFA, uh, for football games, um, but it's not there yet. Um, even, strangely... Um, I was talking to anyone know who Bateson is FIFA, uh, FIFA creator. Mm. Um, I'm talking to him about like the at the uh, Call of Duty event. And I was like, it just it just seems too easy. It seems too like the Ultimate Team this year is the first year on Ultimate Team where I'm like, it it's weird, right? Because what I'm, I'm what I'm about to say is so against what people probably would want, but it's like it's very easy to put money into this game and get what you want out of it mm. in terms of good cards, which is. It's a strange statement to make because that's a good thing, right? Because you're not putting more money in, but you are because you're still chasing that buzz in yeah. a way. So, so the, the, yeah. Do you it, feel like it, they've swung the uh, the RNG the wrong or uh, the right way a little too much? I think they've just. I think they realize it's a first year game. I know we all look at it as right, fun yeah, yeah. but it's a first year game. They want to get people in and they want to get people hitting that dopamine, which is yeah, which is what they've done. Menus are amazing, which I want my team is a big menu game for most mm -hmm. people who understand that. So yeah. Um if I had to hand on heart vote, I would I would vote the Krumo FS. It's the, the experience I had uh, the most fun with personally. So Fair. yeah. Locking in. Crew it is. Perfect. Um Next up is best sim slash strategy uh, game. Best game focused on real time or turn based uh, simulation um, or strategy gameplay in respective of platform. Uh, you have Advance Wars 1 2 Reboot Camp. You have City Skylines 2, Company of Heroes 3, Fire Emblem Engage. Mm -hmm. Right? Pick yeah. and Pikmin 4. Um, why is Boulder's Gate not on here? I don't know. Huh. I, I think I think certain games were only like for like best RPG and stuff like that. It seems like they were only up for one category, irrespective of platform, as well. So it's not like it's the excuse of that. Yeah. It's mm. I'm that is okay. interesting. Yeah, maybe you don't view it as a strategy game. Yeah, maybe someone's looked at it as sim weird, strategy. I think, like, like, yeah. I think you could make the argument that it's <laughs> not a sim. You know, if that's what it's you're not going a sim. For. Yeah, yeah, it's not a sim. Yeah, yeah. I, I I do think it's weird though. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah, game. yeah. Yeah, no, I don't, uh, I don't disagree with that. Uh, I haven't played any of these, so I will go with the one that I wanted to play this year, which is City Skylines Two. Okay, I've played uh, one. Oh, I've played Fire Emblem Engage. Okay. First Fire Emblem game. Fun fact. Uh, oh, really? I really enjoyed it. Yeah, never played a Fire Emblem game. I think I've mentioned it before on the podcast a couple of times. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Nintendo game. Nintendo. Yeah. We don't, when, was... when, when, <laughs> when does Nintendo come up here? Not very often. Let's be honest. Um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Fire Emblem Engage. That's going to be my vote. I very much so enjoyed what I played. I haven't finished it. I would love to go back, but this, but the way this year is, I don't know if I'll go back anytime soon, yeah. unfortunately. Um, I'm I'm going to go with... I'm probably going to go with... We're going to have Fire Emblem list. Matt's played another game on this list. I have not. I haven't touched I've not played this. any of these games. That's so what by, saying. I was going to say, oh, by, yeah, by proxy, I think it's going to be Fire Emblem because there's only one person that's played one game on this entire list. I think that's fair. Ridiculous, absolute ridiculous. City Skyline, <laughs> such a great game. I'm, I'm guarantee. I guarantee. You, <laughs> you guarantee it. Yeah. I haven't I'm played it, but I guarantee, guarantee it. it. I will say, I did hear rumors at the that City Skylines was a bit ropey at launch. You're a bit ropey at launch. I mean, I'm ropey at close as well. I mean, um, if we I'll just look at this list and the game that was received the best, it's probably Pikmin, right? Hmm. Possibly. We're, yeah. we're, we're picking the game that one of us played. Simple okay. as. I'm, I'm, I'm not making an argument yeah, against yeah, Pikmin. Yeah, 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 I'm not yeah. saying that. I'm just saying. For well, the conversation's sake. Yeah, Pikmin's probably right. the best reviewed. But yeah, no. Um, I mean, I'm going to say just because I like anime. Um, Fire Emblem. Cool. Fire Emblem it is. 
Uh, best family game. The best game uh, appropriate for the family to play, irrespective of genre or platform. Disney's Illustration Island. I didn't even though that came out as sorry disney illusion island thank you uh party animals pikmin 4 sonic superstars and super mario bros wonder i've only I'm... played one of these games yeah party animal play. obviously party animal i've played zero so oh, that's I'll a lie to you lot. i did play sonic at, uh, at, um wait yeah did I you not play sonic... party animals with us matt no, it was me that played. No, it was Crash. Me and was Crash. It just, was it just us three? Oh, okay. We picked mm -hmm. up, uh, who was that? Uh, Jay. Jay from. Yeah, Jay. 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 Jay for the carry, yeah. Jay for the carry. Jay was carrying us heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I only played one Pi Animals. I had a great time with Pi Animals. Yeah. It fell off a cliff, if we're being totally honest. Um, it was yeah. there, it was relevant, and then it wasn't. Yeah. Um, mm. I think that's probably doing Super Mario Wonder a huge disservice yeah. I, um but yeah i think ultimately super mario wonder will win this for sure yeah right? yeah 100%. So i'm with you the only game i've played is uh party animals i've had super mario <laughs> pros on there not touched it yeah so that, that was up for best multiplayer what's the multiplayer in it it's four uh, player it's a normal like 2d yeah. mario multiplayer oh okay yeah so but you can there's like screen. a kid mode right where you can play certain characters that can't die for your oh, kids. They've had really it in past ones. I wouldn't be surprised if they did yeah. this one as well. Oh, really? I didn't. I thought that was a brand new thing. Mm. Yeah, no, they've had that with the book. Of, I might be thinking of Knack, too. Knack. Or Knack. Oh, they only Probably. Knack game, We're right? all thinking yeah, of Knack. Knack. No, that was Knack, yeah. too. There was a Knack, too. Yeah, Knack, yeah. One of them, you, you could play, like, the little metal dude or whatever, whoever the second player was, and you wouldn't die, whatever. That's mm. beside the point. But yeah. Everything I've heard about Super Mario Brothers is that it is the best 2D mario since the original mario like super mario world so i can 100 percent see this one winning i will say just as a side note it is nice to see that the uh the nintendo category has got some non-nintendo games in there this year yeah that's always nice a lot of competition for them actually mm -hmm. like every like historically this is basically just nintendo's category to win it still seems like it's the I mean, it still is. To win. Oh, yeah. it's their I mean... category to win. Yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, there's like here's some, you know, uh, yeah. here's some gimmies for these, co like for some of these games. Like you get a nomination, you get a nod, but you're not mm -hmm. winning this. Nothing's beating yeah. Mario. I'm sorry, yeah, but Mario's the only thing that's sure. going to beat Mario is going to be Pikmin, right? Yes, if something's going to mm -hmm. beat it. I agree. Yeah, but we're voting for party animals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 100%. Okay. <Fair> <laughs> um. Next, okay, it's kept me out of the category. Sorry. Next up is a category close to Crush's heart. Best fighting game uh, for the best game designed primarily around head-to-head -head combat. I do like the fact they've put that as their as they their uh, this disclaimer, I guess, mm -hmm. for the category. Uh, you have God of Rock, Mortal Kombat One, Nintendo All Star Brawl Two, Pocket Bravery, and Street Fighter Six. Crash, I'm letting you lead on this one, brother. Look, there's only one game that it should be, and that's Street Fighter Six. Oh. It's not. It's not anything else on this list. What did, what did you think I was? You thought I was going to say Mortal Kombat? They didn't send me a package for nothing, no. Crash. They bought me the up game, for this category. The game that had no crossplay, and the game that if you played a certain character on a certain side, you couldn't perform certain combos. That game. Crash, Crash. I can only talk about a single player. Yeah, and the yeah. single player was absolutely fucking fantastic amazing single what player. an experience mm -hmm. what an experience uh from from start to finish amazing experience i i cannot vote for anything other than mortal kombat i understand that Don't matter. because I, because i didn't play anything else i was yeah. gonna say i've not played anything on this list oh. what is god of rock looks kind of cool this is the first time i've actually heard of it i didn't yeah. hear about it until i've seen this list so maybe i'll check it sure. out yeah um I'm, I'm sorry crash i'm gonna go with fix on this one that that single player campaign was phenomenal in mortal kombat it was yeah like I, I i went into it and i was not like Matt. that that <laughs> i wasn't that excited i was like okay we'll check Matt. it out a new mortal kombat we'll see what it's like but yeah i i ran through that entire campaign in like two sittings i enjoyed it that much me too it's, it's so amazing yeah, yeah. amazing uh, I mean, no, what happens if we tie it up? Uh, <laughs> uh, we, have, we, we fire up Mortal Kombat and go for it. No, I know what happens. It's, it's an absolute, there's five members of this team. Always has been, mate. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah, let's let's tie it wow. up. I've got a street player. 
Haley. <laughs> she looks so annoyed at me already, guys. Um, Haley, we need you to choose between two games as the fifth member of this podcast that does absolutely fucking nothing on it. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Shadow <laughs> Mortal Kombat 1 or Street yeah. Fighter 6? Don't let me down, Haley. What? What's that? <laughs> no, what did you say first? Street Fighter is. She said that first. Um, Let's go. Okay. Wow. You're a, you're an absolute moron. Why are you on Let's this podcast? Go. Stay off it, woman. Worst HR He's the ever. Hey, <laughs> the worst HR ever. You right. <laughs> uh, more combat is. I mean, she's the decider. I respect her. I respect her. We respect her decisions. I, I think you're wrong. I do think you're wrong. But sure. Oh, yeah. I, I, to I, be that's fair. What for. I meant Street Fighter. Chill out. She's yeah, yeah, now you questioning me. Um. Oh, should we sort out a Hayley mic? I'm going to buy sort out a Hayley mic one time. <laughs> for when she wants to talk, yeah. That'd be we should amazing. Talk. I think we should. I think we yeah. should. Sorry, God. I was going to say, uh, to be fair, it's not best multiplayer fighting game, right? No. It's best fighting game. No, no, best fighting game. And like the... So, yeah. So, I guess it's more of a, you know, a conversation to be had. But look, I... Uh, if if Crush is correct, decides. which I, Crush is our fighting game player, mm -hmm. if Crush is telling me there was a bug where one character couldn't be fucking hit from one side... Probably shouldn't win best fighting be game. Hit, but couldn't do combos. I think oh, there was okay. a couple of characters that couldn't do combos based on Oof. the side they were on. So good, don't crash. So good. And I almost beat you, remember? We can run it back if you want to. No, thank you. I okay, to... Wow. Yeah, let's do it. I haven't played since around then, to be honest. You beat so... the story, right? No, no, I have not beat the story yet. You're I, not... I want to beat you just well, for that. The problem... Here's the problem with that is uh, that's right around when my controller died. Oh, yeah. I you need to, coffee on it. Okay, okay. Let me tell you this. You need to be here before the end of the year. You I actually will. do. You I actually will. do. It's so good. I will. Um, it won't make up, my top 10 list, but I will. Next up is best RPG. Uh, for the best game designed with rich player character rich player character customization and progression, including massively multiplayer experiences. Okay. Which none of these are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> massive, no. Yeah, I guess massive, no. Uh, oh, shit. I'll, just, I'll tell you in a sec. Bones Gate 3, Final Fantasy 16, Lies of P, Sea of Stars, and Starfield. I totally forgot that I haven't beat, I haven't finished Final Fantasy 16. <gasps> I totally forgot about that game. Oh. It well. started so well, and then I just fell off. I'll be honest. You it feels like. playing it a couple of times, and then it's. I'll be honest with you. It just felt so empty. I can I, I can, can see, see that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I got. Do you know where I got to? I got to the bit where, and this isn't a spoiler, where you go into the town looking for the woman who's a, um, a sex worker. I guess is the best. Oh way yeah, to call yeah. It. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 That's where I got to. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's only one winner on this list, and it's Bubbles Gate Three. I don't give a crap what anyone says. Yeah, it's a yeah. shame. I, I, I haven't looked through the categories, so I don't know how much Lies of P is nominated, but fuck me, I hope Lies of P wins no. something, but I bet it doesn't. It can't no, win best it. RPG. I'm really sorry. No, it, it can't. can't. No, you're right. It's There's not, only one it, right I, answer. It's Baldur's Gate. It's just boring. If I'm going to be 100% honest, I don't know why Lies of P is necessarily on this list. Like, it has RPG elements, but I think it would have made more sense to put put it on, like, action adventure or something like that. I, think I agree with that. The game. I agree with that. Um... Yeah, I mean, you can make an argument for Starfield. I don't think no, Final you Fantasy can't. 16. No, you can't. You can make... Let me, can I finish speaking my piece before you decide right. to interrupt me? Blunt. You can make an argument for Starfield. You can make an argument for Sea of Stars. Final Fantasy 16 has no argument because the biggest complaint about the game was RPG. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, even though you can make arguments for these games, they don't really compare to the impact Baldur's Gate 3 has had as an RPG and in that genre of making choices and decisions. Uh, so ultimately, without much real competition, it goes to Baldur's Gate 3. So let me land my landing fix before you start interrupting me next time, okay? Okay? Ooh. Sit down. Stay quiet. Stay pretty. That's why you're here. <laughs> stay pretty for the camera. Whoa. 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 I fucking dare you, sir. <laughs> um, are we all in a despawn agreement? Man, yeah. It's, it's boring, but yeah. Like, all of these are fantastic experiences and lies of P. Um, but lies of P is amazing. No, lies of P is amazing. It's just a terrible experience for me personally because I, I hate Souls games. 
Agreed. no matter how many times I keep trying to play them. But yeah, no, all of these are fantastic games. Like Sea of Stars is slept on as well. It's like one of my favorite yeah. games this I, year. But yeah, I wish I I could have made an argument about like, oh well, Baldur's Gate's RPG mechanics aren't really there compared to this game or that game. But it like it's a straight up just fully RPG. So there is <laughs> yeah, no like, form. Absolutely. There's yeah. nowhere you can make an argument. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, no, so 100%. Yeah. It makes me... Do you know what? I don't think there's been a game like Baldur's Gate that just generally makes me happy when I think about it. Mm -hmm. Every time I think about it, I'm like, oh, the experiences that I'm having with that game is just remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. All right. Uh, next up, best action uh, best action slash adventure game. We have Alan Wake 2, uh, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Jedi Star Wars Survivor, and then The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So, at this moment in time, I've only played one of these games. I own four of them, but I've only played one of them. Shame on you. Boo. Yeah, I know. So, we'll, we'll come back around to you then. Boo We've reached a point where I've played all of them. <gasps> I think this is the first category where I've played every single one of these games. Oh, for significant course. amounts of time. Like, nice. over 10, 12 hours each. Damn. So Matt will be the, have the, the the most knowledge, but the wrong opinion. Mm -hmm. Wow. Go on then, Matt. Kick us off. Talk to me. Um, I think the, the, the description is for the best action adventure game combining combat, traversal, oh. and puzzle solving. This is the first one I didn't read. My bad. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, and so for me, it's a toss-up between Spider-Man and Zelda. Not the toss up. The Zelda. Oh. Easy. Not toss up. Okay. Alright. Alright. Yeah. Um go okay. on. Talk, talk, please. Uh, I think Save. if you like including the puzzle aspect, it's for sure Zelda. Yeah, sure, that... but then I alright, if you give puzzle solving to Zelda, I give traversal to Spider Man. Sure, but Zelda's traversal isn't that far behind. Then I give action part to part of that traversal Resident is like Evil. figuring out is is attached to puzzles and figuring out how you're going to get places. Then I give combat to Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man, that good? Well, I'm I'm sleeping. Great. I've not played like yeah, I've not played it. Like I, I mean, I feel, like, I feel like it moved on very quickly. The conversation around it very fast this year. Oh, do you think? I think, I think so. Yeah, partly it's like a packed year, so it's going to happen. But also, I don't think it had the same power as the first one did. Yeah, like, uh... Uh, but, but also it doesn't have. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't have the innovation that the first one did yeah. and but but tears of the kingdom does mm -hmm. like breath of the wild was innovative tears of the kingdom is also innovative in different also. ways and yeah, kept well, the conversation going so yeah i i, I think i think I, i'm happy to go with you crash and go tears of the kingdom but i could i mean i could I argue you for make any an one of these yeah, yeah i could, I could for argue sure. for any one of these it, maybe yeah. except for jedi survivor yeah. um but yeah, yeah I'd, I'd yeah, be happy I to see anyone. Like... I heard nothing but bad things about Jedi Survivor. Maybe because yeah. I was playing, I was about to play on PC, and I heard that port was terrible. Um, well, there's, there's that. They definitely have technical issues. Yeah. I don't know if they've been solved now. Specifically, I think those technical issues were worst on PC. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Jedi Survivor is fine. Jedi Survivor is good, but the rest, the other four, are phenomenal. And so, yeah. But Resident I'm, Evil Four is phenomenal when you add the DLC. Okay. Um, <laughs> it doesn't say the DLC right there. It's no, just it doesn't the DLC. It's just, it's, just... Well. it's not. Oh. Yeah, it's not the uh, ultimate edition. Um, so yeah, <laughs> ultimate edition. Imagine they did that. Like, how, how, how how ultimate edition in all these categories are the no, ultimate no, no. edition. It'd be even more ballsy if it was Resident Evil Four Game of the Year edition. <laughs> oh, that'd DLC. be hysterical. Dixon, <laughs> so what, uh, what are you saying? I mean. <laughs> This is I'm I'm really boring when I come in at the end because I'm just going to agree with everyone. But yeah, like there are arguments across each of these uh, that could definitely be seen as the best action adventure game. But the innovations that Tears of the Kingdom brought, the truly awesome open world that that game has, uh, the puzzle solving, the combat is good. The um the way that they've increased like improved, I should say, not I was going to say fixed, but. The way that they've improved the weapon degradation system, uh, everything felt like just a massive improvement. And to see it still running on a like, because I've got a day one switch, and the fact that that thing runs on that and looks as good as it does, is yep. yeah, it's a technical marvel in itself. But yeah, no, for me, yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. Hands me to have to give you it uh, just because I don't turn on my switch. I have two switches in this house, and I don't know where either of them are. 
interestingly, and I understand why it's not, but probably Hogwarts Legacy should be in here over Jedi Survivor. Should it? I think so, yes. And I, I, I'm glad you brought it up because I was going to, but I weren't sure. And But, you know, one of those ones. Have they been done dirty here? In terms of Look, you can. We can obviously. We all in an agreement when it comes to J.K. Rowling. Fuck J.K. Rowling. Whatever, 100%. whatever, right? But there's a huge team that worked on this game, mm-hmm. and there's a huge audience for Harry Potter, and you know, whatever, whatever. And yeah, I played. I didn't finish Harry Potter. I did feel like it. It it got a little bit too samey for me um, towards the middle. But yeah, the conversation was way more positive on Harry on Hogwarts Legacy the game mm-hmm. um than it was for star wars Jedi survival so for it to not be nominated is is remarkable to be honest was it as an action adventure game not yeah. like we're not taking out like the technical difficulty conversation portion was it that much more positive because i don't think it yeah, was i think it was like From an outsider who oh, okay yeah no, no, no i get, no, I get what you're saying you. i get i think it was like it at the end of the day, my biggest gripe with the game was when we when it was being shown. Like, all I said the whole time was, combat doesn't look that fun. Combat doesn't look that fun. I wonder mm-hmm. if the combat will be fun. And the one thing I'll say about the game is the combat is fun. And it's mm-hmm. intuitive and it works. And and yeah, that, that was the one part of the game that I really did enjoy. I mean, I felt the story was a little weak. Um, but yeah, no, I do, I do think it was snubbed a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's necessarily snub is the only thing i'll say like i don't think people yeah. like i've seen a lot of conversations about like it not being here because of jk rowling and that's a shame i don't know if that's necessarily the case no so i think I, ultimately it's like which one of the the games that like the fandom very much so carried makes the list is it going to be uh star wars or is it going to be uh harry potter and i think it's a toss-up i think i think e- either way so let's say harry potter was in here instead of star wars i still think it's bottom of this list of five Agree. Right. And so I think that maybe they're five and six. There are probably other games I'm forgetting about that could creep yeah. their way into this top five as well instead of Jedi. Um, but looking at that, you know, again, combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving, I had way more fun doing all of that in Harry Potter than I did in Jedi Survivor. Okay. Agreed. All right. Well, Resident Evil is. <laughs> nope. That's yeah, okay. not what we agreed. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. Moving on. Best action game. Uh, for the best game in the action genre, focus primarily on combat. You have Armor Core 6, Fires of the Rubicon, mm-hmm. Dead Island 2, Ghost Runner 2, High Fire Rush, and Remnant 2. A lot of twos. Um, a lot of sequels. A lot of sequels. A lot of sequels. Um, I played two of these games, Dead Island 2 and the High Fire Rush. Me too. High Fire Rush. Um, yeah, I'll do this one. Start us off, sure. Uh, so I played three of these, uh, and I've watched Armored Car as well. Uh, I don't even think I've even seen anything of Remnant 2. Um, so I've completed two of them. Uh, but for me, if we're talking like action game, like primarily focused on combat, it's and it's not just because I'm part of the creator circle, it's Ghost Runners 2 for me. Like, this game, like, the combat is so fluid. Every time you pull off a combo in it, you feel like an absolute badass. I talked about this when we were talking about my review of it. Um, Just, like, technically, I came across zero issues um, in the game. Like, development-wise, they've nailed it. Uh, and yeah, it's just such a fun thing to run around with a samurai sword and slice up bad guys and deflect bullets and dodging laser beams and running through VR modes. It's just, yeah, everything everything from Ghost Runner 1 feels like it's been stepped up like 10 times in Ghost Runner 2. Uh, and yeah, it's such yeah such a fun experience. And uh, it's got that difficulty level that just kind of makes you want to try one more run. Fair enough. Uh, Matt? So I've only played, similar to you, Dead Island and Hi-Fi Rush. I have a feeling if I had got round to Remnant 2, I'd be very passionately fighting for it right now. Yeah. Um, but don't feel like I'm in a place where I could do that. If I was going to honestly vote at this point, it'd be Hi-Fi Rush for me, but more than happy to go with D- Despawn on Ghost Runner if that's the way that we're leaning. No way. Hi-Fi Rush has to be 
it has to be hi-fi rush a new ip of a game that on the outside looking at it um i didn't care about and then started playing it and was like oh shit this is actually fucking really good um it's a rhythm a rhythm based game as well built into that that try something new um yeah of the of the games i've played on this list and even seen for me hi-fi rush I, i'm surprised that hi-fi rush isn't maybe in a di- maybe in a different year it would be up there for game of the year mm. um so uh, it tells a story that i was interested in getting to the end of i wouldn't say it was the best story ever but i was interested in seeing the outcome um and like i say the combat system is something new and refreshing and i really enjoyed it I think it's super exciting as well because it feels like the start of a really interesting franchise. Yeah. yeah. That came out of nowhere that, that, you know, nobody was really expecting and maybe even that team weren't expecting it to land the way it did. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, really exciting. Uh, I've only played one game on this list and that's Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, what I will say is I think the three other games that I am interested in on this list would probably all take precedent over Hi-Fi Rush had I played them. Uh, Remnant 2 is a game that I'm very interested in playing, have been, but this just the way this year came out. Uh, Ghost Runner 2 as well, and then Armored Core as well. All games I want to play, all games I think would outpace Hi-Fi Rush, but I don't think I can vote for a game that I've not played. Damn straight you can't. So, I think I'm giving it to Ghost Runner 2. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'll take Despawn's word on it, he played the it most goes, out of these. It goes to the fifth official then. Hey, it's some fucking stupidness. No, it's high five rush. It's high five rush. Let's stop it. Wait, Jesus. What does having an Xbox podcast have to do with anything? I thought we had a self on honesty. I'm biased as shit on this one. The Xbox oh. need a win. The Xbox need a goddamn win. And we're not, we're not having this conversation. You can stay right there, woman. I'm not dealing with it. Uh, <laughs> best uh vr slash ar game uh for the best game experience playable in virtual or augmented reality irrespective of platform you have gran turismo 7 horizon call of the mountain humanity resident evil village vr and Cy- synapse. 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 synapse synapse um i've never even heard of it um i haven't played my vr headset uh at all this year um I'm shocking a, absolutely I'm nobody a- I'm gonna give the vote to Resident Evil Village. Me too. I'm not, I'm not voting, so. You gotta um, vote. Everybody gotta vote. Everyone got Everybody a vote. Got a vote. Okay. Uh, then just to be contrary, I'm gonna give it to. Be careful what you pick here. Two of those games you should be picking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let me go first, Eastmont, because it might it might help you decide. Cool. Um, I would go Horizon Call of the Man. Um, it, it. You play it. I played it. And oh, it, then it, that's what oh, wins. Then we'll pick that. Yeah, we'll yeah, all pick yeah. that. You played it. Yeah, you played oh, it. Right, okay, sure. <laughs> cool. Not... Let's play that then. Yeah, yeah. Um, there you go. Look, I think. Look, it is essentially a, a quite good tech demo for the PSVR two, right? And like the PSVR two, probably for me wins the award over the game Call of the Mountain, if that makes sense. Like the OLED screen and the the way it blocks out light and all these things is like such an improvement on VR that I was used to that perhaps that colored my enjoyment of Call of the Mountain somewhat, but also Call of the Mountain is the only one of these I've played, and I liked it, therefore that gets my vote. Cool. I'm fine with that, mate. Yep. Uh, Best mobile game. Uh, Best game playable on a mobile device. We have Final Fantasy VII uh, Ever Crisis. We have Hello Kitty Island Adventure. We have Honkai. Hong, mm-hmm. yeah, Hong Kai, Star right. Rail, uh, Monster Hunter Now, and Terra Nil. Anyone play any mobile games this year? Terra Nil. I, I oh, played, okay. Yeah, I played Hong Kai Star, uh, Star Rail. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Oxen Free 2 should definitely be on this list, and it's an absolute crime Oxenfree that it's not. Two. Did that come out on mobile this year? Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's on Netflix, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But would... Okay, I mean, it would make it playable on mobile devices. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, produced by Netflix wait, now. Can we just, based off that definition, anything that's available on cloud streaming should technically no. be on this list? No, I mean, technically, you don't oh, install yeah, the game from an app store. Do not stream. Do you, do you not that's stream not... Netflix games? Literally, what yeah. the se- the category says. No, 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 I, I understand them. that. Wait, 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 wait. For the for the best game playable on yeah. a mobile you can, device you can play cloud games on mobile device right yeah he's a hundred percent right on this list he's a hundred percent right yes 
All right. Well, that argument aside, you yeah. do install and play Oxen okay, Free. Okay, I just didn't know how. Your phone. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know how Netflix. Yeah, works. yeah, that's how yeah. Netflix works. Yeah. You're, yeah, you log into the app, click on the game within it, and it takes you to a download page. Got it. But I haven't played any of these. Um, my vote goes to Starfield. That's great. <laughs> cool. Uh, not nominated, so I'm definitely going to go with Terra Nil, Uh The because I played the uh, PC version of it, and moving over to playing the mobile version, it feels like a one for one uh, transition. Uh, it looks just as beautiful. It works really well with mobile controls. Um, I would have said Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis because it's Final Fantasy, and I love Final Fantasy. Yay me! But that game was a just a microtransaction nightmare that got literally in the way of the game. So uh, no, I'm good. Okay, Saru. Great uh, turn-based RPG. Great characters. Good story. Made by Mahoyo. I respect Crash. I'm voting with him. Wow. Wait, you don't respect me? Stand by what I said. Damn. You've been you've been you've been moody today, Despawn. <laughs> I've I been... stand by what I said. Okay, okay, I see what it is. Uh, I'll vote Terranil. Send it to the fifth official. Haley, <laughs> you realize I get never look heard of either of these though. I, so I get this that, exactly. Um, we need a, a decision based on Hokai Rao, Star Rao, or Terranil. Terra Nil has an easier name to pronounce. Oh, wow. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> she, okay. Terra Nil wins. Fine. Uh, next up, best debut indie game uh, for the best debut game created by an independent studio. A new independent studio is what it says exactly. You have Cocoon. We have Dredge. We have Pizza Tower. Uh, you have Venba. And you have Viewfinder. Now, I haven't played any of these. I know that Despawn's going to say Cocoon. I know that Am I Matt is going to say Dread. And I'm going to go off of what I saw on TikTok, which is Viewfinder. <laughs> okay. So to so, blow your mind, I'm also going to say Viewfinder. Oh, wow. Despawn, what are you going? Uh, Matt, what are you going? Uh, my vote would be Dredge. Uh, Cocoon again is on my list. And I think if I played it, maybe I'd be very passionately um, fighting for Cocoon right now. Um, Ven Venba, is that how we're saying that? Mm -hmm. um, Emma played and thoroughly enjoyed um, and Don't is nagging me to play it. Go um, get her. We, need, we need an opinion. Go. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> She's not, the sixth official does not want to be a part of this podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, look, great, great year. Um, Crash, quick question. Should Liza yeah. P be in here? Best they be, is, would you consider Liza P? How big is an that? An indie game. I don't know. Should Baldur's Gate 3 be in here then? Because Laurie and a Debut. Well, it depends oh, baby, how you look yeah, at true. it. We'll yeah, go yeah. to the indie game conversation, yeah, yeah. and there'll be a whole conversation we should have around that based off one of the games that are there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you can make an argument. Game. You can yeah, make true. an argument for Liza P. To be honest with you, true. Anyway, uh, but yes, my, my vote is Dredge. Dredge will one hundred percent be my Artful Escape this year, a game that I rave about and know that all of you would like, mm -hmm. and none of you will play. Oh, it's on well, my no, list what, to play. What, what platform is it on? Like everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's on the... Switch. I don't... No one touches that thing. <laughs> Excellent. Feel, 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 feel free to come find it for me. Um... <laughs> my, my point is, it's everywhere, yeah, including yeah. Xbox, including PC. Well, I'm thinking more Steam Deck. Is it on Steam? Because maybe Steam I could just play on Steam Deck. Great shape, yeah. mate. Okay. You'd, have a, you'd have a wonderful time. Plus, uh, they've done loads of like new content for it that I haven't mm -hmm. touched and want to get back to. Yeah, I know that they more, more game. That sounds like I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I do know that they had a delay with the uh, the last DLC, so they put out a bunch of free yeah. stuff, which was yeah, which was still well received. But yeah, but right. no, man, for the, for me, I mean, like, I can't say enough nice things about Viewfinder. Like, it was, it's it's been one of those moments when I played that when I first saw that game, I was like, there's no way that this is going to be like actually what it is. And then I got hands on with it and actually played the demo, and then I played the full game code was provided i should say that um but uh yeah the game was like phenomenal how they managed to do what they do within that world i still to this point don't understand how they did it uh the, technically alone it's such a feat of engineering that i've not seen since probably portal it's that good and then just, and then the story behind it as well and just the gameplay loop and everything else in there it's 
it is phenomenal and it should get way more plaudits and like people playing it than it had done uh but yeah i absolutely love it i expected cocoon to win this just because it's the people who made inside and limbo and a promo. Yeah, and it and it's definitely up there um, as being like worthy, but no, I think Viewfinder should win this one. You have played Cocoon? Mm-hmm. I've completed it, ah. and I still think Viewfinder should win. Interesting. Yeah, I I, I really want to play both Viewfinder and Cocoon. Um, Relatively short experiences both times. I know. Mm-hmm. I know. Yep. Yeah. I'll show played, it off. I I've played none of these games. I have an interest in playing none of these games. Um, I, oh. I have two two options in mind to vote for. Um, one brings our fifth panelist into this, mm. and, and the she, other is she's gonna a meme uh, answer. Yeah. She's no, gonna leave Fixer don't if do she it. gets yeah. called in again. <laughs> don't do it. Okay. Well, then my vote's gonna go for Pizza Tower. I feel like it's a fantastic game. Okay. <laughs> it deserves more praise and appreciation. Yeah. I mean, so I do like pizza. Disrespect, disrespecting it. Yeah. So we're voting for Viewfinder. Yeah. Viewfinder. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, here we go. Best independent game uh, for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside of the traditional publisher system. Um, how may we help you? Because you're paying attention. Oh, she's. Oh, she was waiting for it. She was waiting. Oh, okay. I thought oh. she was angry. Oh no, she's she angry. Then. She's not. She's fine. She's okay. fine. Um, we have Cocoon, uh, Dave the Driver, uh, Dredge. Diver, sorry, thank you. Okay. Uh, see of Stars and Viewfinder. So, again, if, if I'm picking off of what I have seen, and not because I haven't played any of these, I'm going Viewfinder again. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. here's the thing. Dave Diver should not be on this list. It is published by Nexon, which makes it uh, not yeah. an indie game. Uh huh. So it being here is very weird. Um, okay, but on the same that same breath, the conversation is because people have been talking about it. Do yeah. you then consider Baldur's Gate an indie game? Yes. Interesting. I, I, I don't do, know. I, do. I, I think I think you put. I think an indie game is based off how much money they have available to put into the game, yeah, and not necessarily based off let's say team size or whether they are an independent studio. I know that's what indie games meant for the longest time. I do think definitions for stuff changes over yeah. time um and that's where i would put it and so for that reason i wouldn't put something like Baldur's gate on the list personally part of the problem with that um mm. is is like the way that you allocate budget right and, yeah. the, and what you call your budget for the game do you include marketing spend do you include mm-hmm. all these things right and so like it, it i mean it's always going to be a bit of a gray area yep. um i've seen a lot of the conversation around dave the diver and whether or not it classifies it should be in this category and stuff like that and to be honest I'm, i don't think i have a strong enough opinion mm-hmm. um but for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system for me creative and technical achievement viewfinder is is a bit of a uh, no brainer for me mm-hmm. um from technical and creative achievement something very unique something very stunning and how the hell did you pull this off um type thing and yeah. so that would be my vote oh 100 um, percent agree i'm gonna be on my lone little island for this obviously if you find it's gonna win it but i'm gonna give it to sea of stars i mean sea of stars is a fantastic choice as well i absolutely adore sea of stars but yeah the technical achievement alone i think you find wins it for me Still don't know how they made that game. Fix. You waiting for me? Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> I have no opinion because I've not played any of these games. Is okay. the problem. Um, Viewfinder is the only game on here that I've I've seen. Um, again, Dread feels like a game that I'm gonna play and very quickly either love or hate. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so for me, I've got to go Viewfinder. So what cool. was the outcome? Uh, Viewfinder. Viewfinder. I was trying. I was. I was trying to figure out how to get us codes for Dread. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Perfect. All right. Moving on. We have best community support, recognizing the game for outside and community support, transparency and responsiveness, inclusive of social media activity and game updates slash patches. We have Baldur's Gate three. Uh, we have Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. We have Destiny two. We have Final Fantasy fourteen. Fourteen. Yep. And we have no man's score. Um, 
so I have a problem with one thing being on here. Yeah. It, it, go on. It's cyberpunk for me. Because just because you fuck up really, really but bad. That's... And then and then No Man's Sky's the same then. I don't, I don't but care that's not this is yeah. community support. Yeah. Is it I is think you're thinking of ongoing game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe you're Which right. Which we can have Maybe a conversation right. with. Uh, Maybe you're right. There, there's yeah, a, so wait, what, let, me, let me read this again. Recognizing the game for outside and community support. Transparency so and responsibility. Developer to community. Not community to developer. It's developer oh, to okay. I think I will... the... I, I, Destiny 2 shouldn't be on this list after what mm-hmm. recently for this, Yeah, for this month, no. Team, um, I think having that there is odd. This was probably like set in motion way before, so... Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. this was the case. I would give it to Baldur's Gate three. I think even with like the whole series S situation, they've always been incredibly transparent and like just like we talked about it like a week ago, and you were like, I wish they said nothing, but it's very much been their thing. Like as soon as anything happens, they just sort of go to the community. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a hundred percent in the wrong for for them to say nothing. I just I don't know how I you know I I I know yeah yeah. I think again. Prior to uh, recent Bungie happenings, there's definitely an argument for a lot of these. Uh, I'd even say the community support on Cyberpunk has been relatively good in so much that they've been very open about their issues that they're having, uh, about what's coming in the updates, what they're working on, things like that. Uh, But yeah, like Baldur's Gate 3, from day one, from the early access to today, they have been very open, very honest um they've even noted when there have been issues i think people mentioned issues with like act three and stuff like that and they've talked about working on that so yeah they'd be very uh yeah very transparent about what they do uh, so yeah i'd definitely give this to Baldur's gate three all right i mean i'm done i'm done to, to you just to want to give everything about this gate yeah personally yeah anything <laughs> that i want them to, i want them to walk away like they did at the uh golden joysticks to be honest with you like oh we've got too many that was so I was doing photography there, right? So oh. I had my big proper professional camera. So I said, okay, right, every because I took the big group shot of everybody and I said, right, everybody give your awards to Sven, who's the CEO. And um took that shot and then everybody whipped out their phones and I went, There's no way that my photo oh, ever sees the light of nope. day because everybody else is immediately tweeting this thing. Yep. And that's the version everybody will see. Yeah. So I'm bitter. Good. Everybody. Damn it, Sven. You had the idea made doesn't mean that you yeah. started, you did anything. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, but they were next, all lovely. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, good. they deserve all the awards they get because they're uh, amazing. Uh, next up is best ongoing game uh, awarded to a game for outstanding development of an ongoing uh, content that evolves that the player experience over time. That evolves the player experience over time. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Apex Legends, Cyberpunk 2077, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and Genshin Impact. Me personally, I'd probably give this to Apex. Really? If I'm being honest. This could be yeah. an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, again, I haven't played Apex in a really long time, um, but it's still going. It ain't dead. Yeah. It's still you going. Can say that about any of these games. Yeah. You could, I'd say, Fortnite's just gone back to, to gone back to. Yeah. to <laughs> things have got so mm. bad for Fortnite that they've gone back to OG. And that's a very <laughs> like, recent thing that they've um, done, right? But, yeah, but it worked. Like they had huge concurrent players again. Oh, like, yeah. It... Uh, th- that's not the question, though. The question isn't. No, that's we... <laughs> it evolves. It literally says the word "evolves" the player experience. They didn't evolve but... shit. They went backwards. But but I would argue that, that it's just about giving the the audience something to latch onto to keep them coming back. Nobody does that better than Fortnite. Um, I disagree. I, you have Genshin Impact in there. Uh, well, I okay. I can't speak authoritatively on Genshin Impact. Maybe Genshin Impact. If you want to make that, that conversation, well. Genshin Impact is for sure in that conversation as well. If that's the co- if that's like the conversation you're going for, I mean, realistically, could you not just go, okay? Well, Final Fantasy XIV has been around the longest, still going, still successful, perfect. Yeah. Like, no, like I, I think, like I don't know, I don't know. I just for me, like for, I just uh, Fortnite's not evolved; they've gone backwards. Cyberpunk made huge mistakes when releasing the game that they had to fix. Mm-hmm. Which, yes, technically yeah, they involve the experience. Technically. 
the fixes have happened like a long time ago. Like it is an evolved experience. Now I get what you're saying, but they've been fixing the game for a very long time since it launched. I agree, but they also launched in such a bad state they had to evolve. Sure, but what I'm saying is what they've done recently is past the point of fixing. They were no longer fixing. They were evolving the no, no. experience. I understand. I'm just okay. Do, do yeah. you think? Do you think they would have evolved the experience if it wasn't broken in the first place? Yes. Okay. Respectfully, I got you. Okay. Well, what'd you go for? They did what'd the same thing for? with Butcher. Yeah, like yeah, they changed yeah. the way that game played and whatnot. Uh-huh. Menu system, stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. No, 100%. Um, what'd you vote for? I would go Cyberpunk for this one. For me, ah. it's between Cyberpunk and Genshin. For me, I'd give it to Cyberpunk ultimately. I feel like that upgrade from what it was to what it is, even excluding the, uh, the expansion, I think it goes to Cyberpunk for me. Of course you're excluding the expansion. That doesn't count. I know it doesn't. That's why I exclude the expansion. Just making sure. Just making sure. Yeah. You gotta get bonus points for Idris Elba. No, I would never. I would never say that a game moves up in my ranking because of an expansion. Of course, it definitely does. It definitely does. No. Definitely does. Doesn't work that way. I mean, Final Fantasy would be dead otherwise if it didn't have expansions. Well, which Final Fantasy? Fourteen. Final Fantasy 14? Fourteen. They, that's a completely different conversation because now you're talking about an MMO that constantly puts out new expansions, where the new expansion is the main content of the game. I guess you can you can quantify it however you want, mate. You know what I mean? Also, Mention... fun fact that I'll disagree with what you're saying is most people who talk about Final Fantasy will talk about experiences based off the expansion alone. So it's never the whole package. It's oh, this expansion is good. Oh, that expansion is good. I agree. So I agree. I agree. Okay. But uh, for me, it's not even close, and it, it's absolutely Fortnite. There's no other game that is ongoing that has its finger on the pulse like Fortnite does that captures the mainstream. Like Fortnite does. Okay. Day spawn. I'm, it's I'm down a, to you. Yeah, it's it not is, down isn't to it? You. Nah. Well, have you not voted? You voted? Yeah, no, I've, yeah, no, I'm just, I, you're forgetting about the fifth member, mate. I don't know about <laughs> Me personally, I would never write her off like that, but that's yeah. you. If that's, if that's how you treat us, well, we've only like been going that, to the no fifth problem. member when it's a tie. So the only if way it goes there is a tie. Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I can tell you that we're not going to be voting individually because somebody has got the same answer as me. Um, and it is basically about the word ongoing. Um, Fortnite is ongoing. It's constantly updating. Wait. A DLC and an, and a one single update to Cyberpunk does not make but it an isn't, ongoing. That isn't all I've done. That Cyberpunk isn't all I've done. hasn't. Two point oh. Yeah, but, it's but like, it hasn't been just two point oh. It's been two point oh in a DLC and bug fixes. But it, no, it hasn't just been bug fixes. They added more apartments. They added customization options like the um the change to how clothing works and stuff like that. Uh, and how you could have outfits and stuff like that. That's an old update. They've constantly been adding content and updating the game. They've added side uh, gigs constantly. So to say it's just one update is just incorrect about it. Okay. I mean, yeah, agree. incorrect. Nah, I agree to disagree. I'm still going with Fortnite. No that's problem. fair. Yeah. That's it's fine. just the reasoning was incorrect. The reason, the, the statement for Cyberpunk was incorrect. Fortnite, it is. Uh, Games for Impact uh, for a thoughtful, provo thought provoking game with a pro social meaning or message. Uh, we have a space, a space for the unbound, uh, chance of the center, chance uh, of center, goodbye, yeah. So, yeah, chance of. Oh, did I say the? Yeah, uh, goodbye, volcano. Hi, uh, cheer. Thank you, uh, Terra Nil and Venba. Venba. <clears throat> Again, I haven't played any of these games. So, Maybe. what's the impact in Terra Nil? Uh, you basically uh, rebuild the planet uh, after it's been destroyed by uh, pollution. So it's all oh. about uh, yeah, like revitalizing wildlife and just the planet itself. Sounds very anti-capitalist. I can't vote for that game. No, that's, that's, that's America, fine. yeah. Brilliant. Uh, 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 we really should get the sixth official in on this because she has played. Five of six. <laughs> okay. I've played so, two. We got. We'll go with what's in front of us. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, this one. What? What are we doing? Talk to me. Um, I'm gonna go with cheer on this one. Um, it is a beautiful game. Uh, it's very much like a kind of classic 3D Zelda with a kind of like just fun like environmental twist on it. Uh, it's very much about a little girl fighting against the the the, uh, the evil corporations, 
but it also has it's it's really well rooted in like Polynesian culture as well. Uh and it just plays fun. It's just a fun game to play. Uh and yeah, I absolutely love that game. Uh, also it's ridiculous at times as well. It has the ability where you can basically soul jump into animals uh and different uh items to the point where you can jump into a cow and shit. I mean like ten out of ten game of the year, right? Sounds like a winner to me. Mm -hmm. Sounds sounds good to me, mate. Yeah. All right. That um, chance of Senar is on my list to play. It's the one of those that I'm most excited to play. Okay. I've been hearing incredible things about it. I'm not gonna lie, we've all been saying a lot about oh yeah, we got to, we better fucking get to him by the end of the year. And you've got you're gonna probably oh. have like a week in January as well. But yeah, there's a lot to play. Almost definitely won't, but yeah, I understand. Get to it. Can't get to everything. I can. Okay. I have, I have infinite in, in, infinite time. Infinite he's just gonna time. stop sleeping. Next time he's going on Sleep. the podcast, he's gonna have to. I'm, his, no, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna keep it a stag with you. I just waste so much time at the moment. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm awake until like three o'clock in the morning playing football manager. I know you sent asked if we're doing the podcast tomorrow at like one o'clock your time or something like that, and I was like, I don't know which tomorrow he's talking about. Mm. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> I, yeah, I meant. I actually meant yesterday, yesterday not today. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. That's why I gave it a thumbs up. I was like, yeah, it's tomorrow. If, um, if Football Manager and both Bold uh, both Boulders Gate and Football Manager had both made it into the best sim category, who would you be voting for? Boulders Gate. Oh, Boulders Gate. Okay, interesting. Not even, not even close. But who are you voting for in this category? Uh, Innovation in accessibility. Recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. You have Diablo 4, Forza Motorsport, Hi-Fi Rush, Spider-Man 2, Mortal Kombat 1, and Street Fighter 6. Again, not something that affects me, so I don't know about... The only time that accessibility comes into call is when... You have very good, um, you know, readers for me. If I, if you have an option or dyslexic backgrounds and things like that, um, those are the only times that these things come into play for me. I don't know what any of these games have done in the accessibility front. So, same. Yeah. Um, it says software and or hardware. There's did no the hardware place, here. The, did the PlayStation accessibility controller not make the cut off? Don't look uh, like it. No. Because that seems like but a huge I, I don't omission. Think, I don't, even when the Xbox controller came out, if I'm not mistaken, it wasn't on the list for that no. year either. It wasn't. just seems odd to include hardware in there then if you're just not and then not include, include hardware. the hardware that came out that year. I agree. It is um, what it is. It is what it is. Uh, I remember Hi-Fi Rush having good accessibility and people talking about I, that. I remember all of these games, with the exception of Spider-Man and Mortal Kombat, having conversations around accessibility for them. Yeah. I'm so pretty sure I do remember Mortal Kombat. I thought Diablo's was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Mortal Kombat might have. I just don't remember it, if it did have. I didn't use any of it, but I do remember it had a, quite a, an extensive selection of stuff. But yeah. Um, but like you say, because I don't use it, it's I, I don't feel comfortable voting on any of these. Agreed. I do. Okay. Diablo. Okay. There you go. Diablo wins then. It's not that deep, you know. It's nah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, best performance an award uh, to an individual for voice over acting, motion, and or performance capture. Uh, we have Ben Starr for Final Fantasy 16, Cameron Morgan. Monaghan. Monaghan. Yeah, I, I knew I was getting that wrong. Star Wars, uh, Jedi Survivor. I know, I just guessed it. Uh, Idris Elba, uh, Cyberpunk uh, 2077, Phantom Liberty. Uh, Melina Limbird? Mel Fuck. Uh, yeah. Melanie Limbird. Wait, she's in Vampire Diaries. Mm -hmm. I know her. Uh, not, I don't know her, know her. Uh, <laughs> BFFs. <laughs> <Neil> <laughs> Neil Newborn, no, please don't. Uh, and then uh, for Baldur's Gate 3, wait, what character does he play in Baldur's Gate? Uh, uh, Starion. Oh. The vampire. Because you can't vote for him. Oh, <laughs> you've, oh, not, you've not really seen him. I wouldn't know. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Wait, did, you not, did we not tell you what we did when we played? No. Yeah. You killed him right away. 
Well, he died instantly because Crash yeah. killed him. Mm. Then Crash brought him back to life. <laughs> then we the had the blows. option to to give him to the devil, so we did. Yeah, he's gone. Wow. And we ain't seen him since. Uh, and then you have Yori, uh, Lower Thor. Lower Thor. Lower Thor, yeah. Uh, for Spider Man 2. Um, Earth. I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't. I, I'll sustain because I don't. I don't think I've really had a great experience with any of them. I haven't, I haven't started Star Spider Man yet. So, yeah. Ben Starr is the main character of uh, Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, yeah I know. I, yeah, okay. didn't, didn't do anything for you, okay? Uh, yeah, Clive, whatever, bro. That's fair. <laughs> whatever, well, I don't, bro. I don't think it's based off whether you like the character, but more so. No, the performance. Like, what you're no. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, like, I personally think his performance was the best one on this list. Um, it's up there. Yeah. yeah I think. We, I've seen interviews and stuff about like how he's used his real life experiences in his acting in the game, and it like some of the pain that he in like I don't want to dwell on it too much, but yeah, some of the pain that he actually brought up is like you genuinely feel it in some of those more heartbreaking moments in the story. And uh, yeah, I think he did a really good job of like per like uh, portraying that emotion in the game. Uh, and yeah, uh, again, I can't really comment too much. I don't think too much of melanie's experience so far of what i've played of alan wake it feels very like not i don't want to say wooden but it, it definitely feels like it, there's not a lot of emotion in that for me so much but again that might change just because where i am in the game uh i've not done the cyberpunk dlc i didn't play jedi survivor um and yeah uh staring is fine and yeah i have not played spider-man 2 yet so yeah, I'm gonna make a prediction that Asterion is gonna end up winning it. You think? But that's that's not who I vote for. Who you voting for? Did you say who you voted for? Yeah, yeah, uh, Ben, Ben Star. Ben, okay. Um, for me, it really comes down to Ben Star and Idris Elba. Um, Idris Elba is very good in Phantom Liberty from what I've played. Uh, but Ben Star, I think, ultimately does get it because exactly as you said, like you feel his emotion in certain scenes in that uh, game. So I do think he ends up uh, winning it for me. List. Matt? Uh, yeah, so the Golden Joysticks, Ben Star won Best Lead, uh, Neil Newbern won Best Supporting. Um, both very worthy winners, but for me, it's between Yuri Lowenthal as Spider-Man and uh, Melanie in Alan Wake 2. Okay. And I think I give it to Melanie. Um, maybe a bit biasly, like, Yuri Lowenthal is a phenomenal Spider-Man and is Spider-Man in everything. If you've yeah. played a game, he was probably Spider-Man in that game. It was either him or one other guy who was Spectacular Spider-Man, I think, TV show. Mm -hmm. um, but Yuri's like done that role forever and is fucking brilliant. Um, and because of that, I'm leaning more towards Melanie and Alan Wake. Okay. And so I think that's my vote. Which maybe I'm isn't fair. I'm voting Ben Star, so there you go. Okay. Would you say, like, just again, just on my own comments, would you say, like, from where I'm at at the moment, I've just... Without spoiling anything, I've just got to the main part with Alan. Uh, You've been where... to the nursing home? No, not yet. There's a nursing home? Thanks to the spoiler. Yeah, no worries. But yeah, um, no, would you say like her, from what I've played so far, would you say her like performance like ramps up from there? Yes. Yeah, okay. Cool. I'm interested. I'm, I'm excited to see it. But yeah, just from like my experiences so far, I think it's been... I think I'm forgetting how good the opening is of Final Fantasy XVI. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. Just the ending of that demo that they released. Oh, I man. didn't play it as a. No, I did play it as a demo, and then it was like a day yeah, yeah. after I got the code. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think I forgot how powerful that opening is. Just, I mean, so yeah. For just, that alone, I'll give it to Ben Star. I'm gonna say just the line "I'll fucking kill you" in that demo at the end, like just sent goosebumps up my spine. I can do that later if you like. Giggity. Uh. Ben Star is them. Uh, next up, best audio design, recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. We have Alan Wake 2, Dead Space, Hi-Fi Rush, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4. My answer is, I would have played, by the end of the year, played all of these games. My answer is Dead Space. Okay. Not Same. even a question. Like, I said, it, I said it on the podcast when, what was it I played? Between that and Resident Evil 4, I believe, and I was like, there isn't the a game that the, the audio design and the at, just atmospheric, um, the atmosphere of that game is second to none until I play Alan Wake, and I'm sure 
um it will do a very good job but we'll see um but yeah th this has to go to dead space in my opinion agreed i've played four of these games yeah i've played four four of these games so from what i've played i think dead space gets a i think high fire rush might win it yeah i could see, see this being a one where high high fire rush walks away with it for sure have you played alan wake rush no that's the one i haven't played so if you two were to say alan wake i could see that being the case but i mean for me it's absolutely alan wake it have you played 100 percent alan wake i have played dead space i didn't finish it but i played dead space um yeah alan wake for me in a similar conversation to hellblade senua saga senua sacrifice um just did stuff with audio that i've never seen before and and did stuff with gameplay that i've never seen before but obviously we're talking about audio it kind of all ties into one but but um yeah for me it's it's phenomenal um i have no bad things to say about it and it so much adds to the game in a way that like spider-man's audio is great but it's not anything it yeah it doesn't yeah, it's add just good to audio the yeah um the directional the audio of... in alan wake is yeah there's nothing quite like it like for yeah. the unnerving experience it gives you like i i genuinely felt myself like almost looking around sometimes just because of like the way that the noise works in that game uh and especially when you're in the um i, I want to say is it the underside or whatever you want to call it uh, hey, basically, yo, the you look, you look better relaxed. You look yeah, better relaxed. You better yeah. relax. Okay. You better relax. I will okay. start beating people up. I promise. I'll find you. Don't okay. You'll find you. Yeah. Wow. But yeah. It's, there's no spoilers. I'll it's all in. Win. It's all in trailers. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it is. yeah. But I don't know what it's called. They don't say it in the trailer. They don't. I don't think they say it in the game. So I've just, you know I've, it, then? just off what people have called it outside of the game. They definitely say it. I was like, he's trying to cover. Oh, does it? Okay. I'm not going to find Definitely sounds like it. Definitely sounds like it. Um, I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give you the vote. I'm not no opposed problem. to that. I mean, yeah. I, I, the problem is, right? Hi-Fi Rush definitely deserves to be in the conversation as well, but Absolutely. it's just doing something so different. Like, yeah. in a similar I, way, it's impacting the gameplay, and it's, uh, like, without the game, it doesn't work, but... Hi-Fi Rush, like, in, in its defense, and I'm, I'm going to give you guys Alan Wake, but in its defense, like, the audio and the beats with the combos, like, that is very creative uh, sure, audio yeah. design, right? So if it wins it, I have, like, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. Because to me, it's, like, 100% could deserve it. Um, and thinking about it from that perspective, maybe I would give it over Dead Space, to be honest. I think I'm I would give it over I'm Dead Space. Yeah, yeah, sure. Fa yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, all right, fine. I don't like fine. fine. I can't. I, I need to just fucking play this game. Is the you annoying do. part? You really like, do. It's, it's 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 one of those. It's just. Yeah. All right. That's fine. I can't bother to keep talking about. It. Oh, here um, we go. Best score of music. Do you know what's missing from those spoilers? Lists? I think I think Matt P <laughs> might agree with me. Oh, first do your whole. No, no, go on, go on, no, go on, no, please. Uh, go on. Why is Liza P not on this list for best oh, score? Well, of best music. score. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Liza man. P has. In my opinion, the best score out of it beats every single game on this list. Yep, the score in that game is fantastic. And you, there's narrative reason for you to actually listen to the score as well. Um, that 100. percent I think the only thing that comes close to that for me is Final Fantasy 16, um, which possibly beats it out. But I still think uh, Lies of P wins for me. Alan Wake does a very similar thing to Lies of P. It's very, oh, it very good. Um. I, I would put them on... Uh, no, I'd put Lies of P above it, um, but I would put Alan Wake as a very, very close second. But best score music, there's just no way I can't say it's Hi-Fi Rush out of that list, I think. Interesting. I th I think... I'd give it to Hi-Fi Rush as well. Yeah. The whole, I I would... the whole game's designed around fucking music. Like, I think I give it to Final Fantasy XVI personally from this list. I'm not glad you're outvoted, my friend. Yeah, I mean, I. Final Fantasy voted yet? I mean, it's true. Uh, I mean, I do love the Final Fantasy uh, soundtrack. I mean, I always do. The way that they bring classical compositions to modern music, so good. Uh, but yeah, no, Hi-Fi Rush. Just the audio design for that game is just phenomenal. I think the important part here, and the and the the soundtrack audio itself. Design. Yeah, let yeah. Me, okay. Let me let me but, let me no read it design. out. Can't put yeah. audio design in this conversation. All right, for, outstanding, for outstanding music, inclusive score, original song, and or licensed I, soundtrack. I hate the licensed soundtrack portion. Yeah, I think well, I think I, you win I think if it's, it's not. Cheating. I think you win if it's not licensed. Yeah. 
I High Five Rush think. doesn't qualify if you can't include license. Yeah, so. no, exactly. Yeah, no, no, I get that. I, um, what was it? The year Death Stranding one, it was like all licensed songs. Mm -hmm. So I just generally hate that that's included because I feel like it's reductive to games that are like, let's compose whole things for the yeah. purpose of the game as opposed to let's just pick a bunch of songs that we feel like could fit our game. But I don't know. I just feel like there's a lack of... I don't know, man. I disagree with you there as, in a sense because music is so powerful right and if you if you can match those two things together mm -hmm. it, it I, can uh, make such a magical moment that that I even creating something from scratch might not be able to yeah. to bring I, out here's a the perfect example of that i 100 yeah, i don't disagree with you but i the song that you're talking about i don't think would be considered in the soundtrack because i don't think it's included in the soundtrack no no I, that was the it. that was just the, ex the, the example i was giving music yeah. like no, I get you. those together so but yeah, for me, it's Hi-Fi Rush. Matt, Hi-Fi Rush, Despawn, Hi-Fi Rush, yeah? Agreed. Sweet. So kind of contradict what you were saying though, Crash. Lies of P does do that. Lies of P has does a lot it? of license. I, oh, I'm pretty okay. sure a lot of those songs are licensed songs. Okay. I'll give it to you. I'm not sure if they're licensed or not. I'll give it to you. I'm not sure either, but I'm yeah. pretty sure. But yeah, no, I think... Not... Oh, go on. But Sorry. Let's move. Let's keep it moving. We've got yeah, a lot more move. to go through. Go uh, best art direction for outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. Alan Wake 2, Hi-Fi Rush, Lies of P, uh, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Matt looks in pain I, right now. I am. I, I know why he's in pain, because he wants he to give too. something it, and it wants him, it wants, It's between, for Matt, it's between Alan Wake and Lies of P. Mm -hmm. It is. I'm, I'm going to do it for you, Matt. I'm going to give it to Lies of P. I think the art direction in that game is amazing, but from what I've heard of Alan Wake 2, I don't think Lies of P wins anything this year, unfortunately. God damn. I think you're right, mm -hmm. but I think, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, that is a real toss-up for me, 50-50. Leave Matt to the end and you two go. <laughs> let, right. him, let him... Well, let the me problem, this is the problem. Am I basing it off of what I've played? Yeah, that's what the way we've done everything. Sure, then let us lazy pay. But, mm. but I was going to say, like, I don't think you do need to base it off what you've played because it's art direct. Like, you could have watched gameplay, you could have I seen agree. enough to, oh, to that's say, a... oh, I know this I agree. visually is doing you, something more yeah. interesting. If you if you're basing a, re a review, or like a choice on gameplay, then yeah, possibly yeah, lean okay. towards what you've played. But without direction, you can you can say that this looks good without actually alan wake alan it. wake is the is is the choice for me but if we're going based off of what i've no. played there will be lies of pay over everything else on this list you could go alan wake perfect alan wake is then yeah i'm gonna He's say I'm, alan wake. yeah like even just a small amount of time i spent with it it trumps everything that's on this I'm list just... I'm just gonna say this matt if you say lies of p and it goes to the fifth member <laughs> let's do it I'm, let's send I think it to Haley the <laughs> I was risking for a chocolate biscuit. I'm not going to lie to you. She will do that. I don't know. Go on. Yeah, we're going to send it to the fifth official. I'm voting for Lies of P. Hey, Lee. <clears throat> it's your time to shine here. Very important category. Best art direction. We have Alan Wake 2, Hi-Fi Rush, Lies of P, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. What was the game that you've looked at the most and went, oh, I really like the look of that? We just need an answer. It's a podcast. I need, I need audio here. I have to keep talking if you stay silent. Hurry up. You're just doing this on purpose now. It's very annoying. Come on. <laughs> Quick I just need you pick answer. one. No, don't worry about that. Just pick an answer. It doesn't matter. Literally does not matter. Bum, bum. Liza P it is. Like we thought, boys. <laughs> oh, man, I hope they get something, but I have a horrible feeling they won't get anything. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, unfortunately. No. I just don't see like the possibility. Yeah. I need to. Can we just uh, real quick? To any of your guys' partners, sorry, crush. Um... <laughs> Heartbroken right now. <laughs> I love you, crush. Um, do they ever like you give them a simple, just like yo, pick something, and they want to spend like an agonizing time over it? The, um... Be like, this literally doesn't affect your life in any way, shape, or form. But you can't just pick. She's like, what do you want? Don't worry about what I want. Just pick. I had this exact same argument last night. Okay, cool. It's yeah. not just me. No, no, it's Matt's not just like, you. Matt's like, I've just got married. I ain't saying nothing. There's no uh, way I'm speaking. Yeah. There's no way. My relationship's not coming out on this podcast. There's yeah. no chance. Matt's still in probation. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't, yeah, get, yeah. To, you don't get to rebuttal. We don't get to rebuttal. Um, best narrative. 
uh, for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in game. Uh, we have Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, Final Fantasy 16, and Marvel Spider-Man 2. There is only one for our answer. 100%. Keep it moving. Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Along it's a trick. Like, I genuinely, like I keep saying this, Alan Wake 2 is doing some things in games that I've never seen before, mm -hmm. and it's fucking brilliant. But Baldur's I Gate is just next level. I think every one of these games, with the exception of Spider-Man, does fantastic narrative things, but mm -hmm. it is bold as game. Spider-Man narrative not good? Small Spider-Man. Spider it's not bad, it's just more spider -Man. It doesn't yeah. do anything, like, exceptional with yeah, okay. uh, the Spider-Man. Sure. Fair enough. The word uh, outstanding is in there. That's not what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. Best game direction? Awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Super Mario Bros. Wonder and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Once again, for me, it is Baldur's Gate 3. There is nothing that trumps that for me at this moment in time. Um, again, we've been through it. We've spoken about it at length now when it comes to Baldur's Gate. Creatively, I think it's so far and beyond any game that I've played so far. Um, this year, at least. This is a tough one. Because I think this is the one category where I can't give it to Baldur's Gate 3. Because I think if we're talking about creative vision and innovation, I think. I haven't played Alan's, Alan Wake, so I don't know if that would get it. Um, or Super Mario Wonder. Um, but I think I would give it to Zelda, right? With the whole, the way the creating stuff works and the way they innovate on that um, game, game direction. I think I would give it to Zelda from that aspect. Okay. So I would give it to Alan Wake for that exact same reason. I think the way that they have combined live action with gameplay and sound design into a unique singular vision um, that I don't, yeah, I don't think there's been anything quite like it uh, since probably Control. Uh, and this is just like taking it up to the nth degree. Uh, yeah, I think just for game direction alone, I think it's going to have to be Alan Wake for me. Go on, Matt. Do it. I mean, I'm Say tempted to say. throw it out for fucking Mario Wonder just so we throw it to the fifth official, if I'm honest with you. No like, way. No, we've got to stop. Li like, I am we would get it. Free. She'd go for Spider-Man. I just want that to be known. <laughs> yeah. she'd, recognize no, she'd probably give it to Baldur's Gate, to be fair. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, probably. yeah. I, I think, like, yeah, I, I, you all make very valid points. I could go anyway on it. I think... I, I think I've got to give it to Baldur's Gate, though. Okay. Not mad at that at all. No, not mad. Like so, that, yeah. That's it, right? I wouldn't be mad at any of them. Yeah. Any of those. Well, I would be. It. I'm gonna say I'd be married if you gave it to married, married, mad if you gave it to Super Mario Brothers. Well, last but not least, game of the year, recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across across all creative and techno uh, technical fields. Alan Wake Two, Baldur's Gate Three. Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Fresh? Can we all say it at once? <laughs> Is there going to be somebody who has a different opinion? I'm going to give it to, I'm gonna give it to Bo uh, Baldur's Gate 3. I don't think anything else is taking that from it this year. Yep. It, can we just talk about how special this game is for just a second? None of us have beaten the game. Nope. Yeah. yeah. None of us have completed Baldur's Gate 3. And we are talking about it with this much um, enthusiasm. I feel like I've beaten, I've put 50 hours into it um, and I feel like I'm just scratching the surface. I've mm -hmm. literally just beat Act 1. And if you don't play this game, you won't understand that. Like, you'll be like, what do you mean? You've only beat yeah. Act 1. Like, it just doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Boulder's Gate, I feel like I've, I'm have i I'm merely scratching the surface with Boulder's Gate. And there are so many things, and I've said this before, I said this last week, Um, there are so many things that you can do in the game that I don't even know right this precise second. Mm -hmm. And we had this moment um the other night where we, we had this, this thing happen. And we kept dying, and then, or something would happen, and it would go on to another thing, and then we'd die at that moment. So we had to keep loading back. You can save the game at any moment, but we hadn't, right? So we had this different, so many different outcomes in this one scenario. And I was just like, this is crazy. This is absolutely nuts that 
a whole thing, a whole town. And again, I don't want to spoil it in any way, shape, or form. But a whole town has now just survived, meaning the merchant, uh, the, the 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 animals are still there. I've got an ability towards animals; they're all still there. The 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 merchant's still there. These kids that I've saved three times now are still there. And if I just would have chose a different option, they'd all be dead. All of them, st dead, done, over. Never see them again. Like that on its own to me is just so remarkable. And the fact that you can talk to everybody and it, it, it's, yeah, it's such it's, a special game. It's so special. It's the RPG concept that so many games have promised, even like Cyberpunk or Mass Effect or Fall or whatever it is. Like you have a conversation, you pick a dialogue option and it has ramifications of the game. And then you yes. play those games and it's like, uh, just nothing barely changes, right? With this game, yeah. it is very much so. Like there are story impacts for the game. They might not be tied to like the main story, but they affect no. that world in such an impactful way that you walk yeah. away with a very powerful experience from it. I think, I think that's the biggest let down. Really quickly, sorry, is no. maybe I don't enjoy the main story because I don't really know what the main story is because I'm experiencing my story. Yeah, it's, it's not to me. There isn't the main story, and I've got to go through this main arc. It's like. Well, this is my character. This is my story, and I'm gonna go off on this journey. Yeah, and I'm kind of glad it's that way, to be honest with you. Yeah, Baldur's Gate does a really good job of like starting on the story, like saying, "Yep, yeah, you've got something in your head. Get rid of it. Yeah, uh, go to this town, and you'll be able to do it." And then whatever happens in between that is totally up to you. Um, the thing I love most about it, I mean, there's so many things to love about it, but the, I think it's the writing. And it's not like the mo like the, the epic moments and like these massive stories. Is that every single tiny conversation feels so well rounded and fleshed out? Uh, and even in one of the most like some of the most fantastical moments, it still feels grounded in like language. Genuinely, like it feels like a proper conversation. It doesn't feel like it's a gamified moment. It feels like you're having these conversations, and everyone feels like their emotions are genuine. Uh, and that they are reacting how they would react in those situations. But you can affect that in so many different ways by doing so many different things. And even if you choose to do the most ridiculous thing, the game knows how to react to that yep. in such a grounded way. And yeah, there's nothing... I've not had an experience like Baldur's Gate outside playing D&D. &D. Genuinely, yeah. like... Being able to control a story and a narrative in the way that Baldur's Gate lets you, there's nothing quite like it outside D and D. I don't think. I I think one thing it does benefit from really is you see that early access benefit of where like people will play around with it and it's like oh people mm -hmm. have done that maybe we adjust the narrative that way right yeah, yeah um and it's really used that to the maximum extent where it's not just affecting the gameplay impact but it's narrative impact like we've seen how players play the game we've seen the choices so like when we fix that in act one we know how to approach uh what a player might do in act two and act three and stuff they didn't have access to and so you see sort of that um effect throughout the whole game right yeah mm -hmm. no 100 I, I'll, I'll say this and i think this is the biggest compliment that i can give it's i've not had this feeling for a studio than i had before um cg project red after the witch i was like i'm a i'm a fan and then obviously big mix mix myths step unfortunately but i am now a larian fan like i am so excited and like i am a rock star fan right like i have now put them on that same uh pedestal which ultimately is a scary thing to do as well because mm -hmm. now there's expectations right beforehand going into this i had no expectations now now i do you know the next game needs to be as good if not better which is very hard to do for a game that i i'm absolutely in love so, with but yeah their next game comes out right they do the early access thing again do you yep. play it in early access or do you absolutely because i now understand i understand bro you gotta remember we all of us who did i get codes me you d spawn mm -hmm. uh, just, like, yeah. it was just the three yeah. of us yeah i remember when we got codes for the game i didn't even understand what it was yeah. i just remember it being oh there's this there's this uh dnd &D game coming out oh, i like dnd &D. spoke to jake shout out jake who's been on the podcast and was like he was like yo you want code you want to play it yeah i was like oh boys we'll play it's like a dnd &D campaign i remember saying that to you guys mm -hmm. yeah i remember playing the game and getting so overwhelmed and being like god this fight's going on long yeah because i ran into a town and attacked their whole people yeah I'll do it. i didn't understand what that was i didn't know what that meant yeah. and then i play it again and i'm like what oh 
they're not just bad guys. They're not just good guys. I but decide what they them. are. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I decide what they are. And to, sorry, I know I've gone on a tangent, and that's kind of yeah. what I do. But um, no, yeah, absolutely. Because again, playing that one, I could play that one act. They say they give us a whole act again, right? I could play that one act for seventy hours. It's been proven now. Like, and yeah, I can beta test it or whatever, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I will. I'm such a. It's like you said to me, if GTA come out with an hour preview right now, demo right now for GTA Six, would I play it? Yes, and I'd play it over and over and over and over and over and over again, which is pretty much what I'll probably do with insert Larian's next game. So, yeah. yeah. Do you, do you feel like they um, like we could see a game from them sooner rather than later? Like sooner than people expect. Like, well, I hope not. they've got their foundation right. Like they built their D and D game. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah. really need to change too much mechanically. Well, they build new world and a new story, and it depends. Because like, do they go back to like a Divinity Original Sin or something like that? I think that's like which, which had like D and D elements, but it wasn't quite D and D. Yeah. And if they go to Divinity Original Sin, do they go more to that formula, or do they adopt the D and D formula into that? Right. Let me say. Baldur's Gate is it is a licensed game, right? It is part of D and D. Yeah. Whereas I don't don't think Divinity was. I think that was its I'm, own. I'm not sure. No. Yeah. I'm not sure. So yeah, so but there'll I mean, definitely be changes. Like they'll have to like. Well, you could adapt. you could take all of, like the dice roll and stuff. You could take yeah. like the core D and D elements that aren't like sort of obviously not the world and stuff like that. But yeah, you yeah. take those elements that make D and D D and D without the um the the demons devils and all that. Oh, yeah, you is... could, the tabletop stuff. Yeah, I'm 60 hours and I haven't even made it to Baldur's Gate yet in a game called Baldur's Gate 3. I don't think you get there until the end. The end? The oh, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Because I've You're been good. thinking, I've been thinking, yo, where the fuck is Baldur's <laughs> Gate? Because I ain't been there. <laughs> Looking yeah. for the game. <laughs> so when you went left, you should have gone right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is the thing that I love about it. Like you're talking, like you've got 50 hours or so in on a single character. There are multiple classes, multiple races. The way that they will right. have direct effect on the cam campaign that you play as well. Just that's it's... without even looking at mods, which yeah. there's already a ton of mods that add classes mm -hmm. and add races and do all this yep. stuff. Like this game, people who enjoy this game will be eating off of this game for a very long time, especially yeah. if you have it on PC. I know that conversation when it comes to Xbox and it's already on PlayStation. If you play on one of those platforms, that conversation isn't necessarily as much there but i still think it is there's still so plenty many there. Classes. yeah <laughs> yeah still exactly plenty there. <laughs> exactly i mean there's nothing to stop them doing a uh a bethesda and putting a mod engine in the console version they in the future no. No. probably won't it's but too... yeah it's, unless it's yeah it's yeah because they have to change their whole ass like look at the focus of modding on that game like where now it's completely community-based they have to start talking about bringing that in-house like bethesda do yeah, probably not going to happen. But I mean, it's it's a nice option, right? I'm playing on PC anyway. But yeah, yeah. yeah. For those that want to like experience Matt, that, you've been quiet. You're the, probably the most D and D guy I know. Yeah, look, the the right answer for the conversation that we're having, game of the year, is 100 percent Baldur's Gate, and it is such a phenomenal achievement, and just makes the right decision at every turn. Um, by allowing you to make any decision that you want. Um, it just feels like in a world where, yeah, games have often very big promises that they don't live up to, it, it's turned that on its head and gone, no, 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 we've, we've done it. We've pulled off the thing that we said we were going to pull off um, and done it through early access and done it with the help of the community. And it's just a, such a phenomenal story for that team. Um the only other one I would ever consider in this category would be Alan Wake. In the same way, Fixer, that you talk about Larian becoming a studio that you really care about and are a huge fan of, Remedy has become that for me with this. Yeah, I loved Control, um, but but what Alan Wake has done to innovate um, has has very firmly made me a huge fan of that studio, and I that cannot makes me wait happy. to see what they do mm. next. Because I'm I'm um, already that I've already been like that, right? I've, I've already been on that on that wave of Remedy being a top tier studio. I've been talking about that for years, which yeah. I think is probably why people are shocked that I've not played their game straight away. Sure. Um, yeah. But it's literally just because I know once I start it, I you don't want to stop. Yeah. And yeah. again, I mean, Alan Wake have a very, we have a very special relationship. Again, it was a game that I didn't care about. Haley's brother, the day I met Haley's brother, um, he lent me 
24 games, I think it was, of like Xbox 3. He was like, this one you need to play. And I was like, what is it? It's like, you're... You fight these ghosts with flashlights, and he's not the best at describing games. And I was <laughs> I like, nailed it to be fair. I was like, mm, I'm not too sure about this one. I remember me and Hayley playing it in his in her brother's bedroom at the extra TV, and I was like, holy shit. So, like, this I want to set aside a lot of time for that game. And again, mm. 15 to 20 hours, I say it takes, but um, I want to have the time to do it. So, yeah, I will very, very soon. But, um, yeah, no. Yeah. I'm, both, to, 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 I'm glad to hear you say that about Remedy. I feel like any other year, Remedy sweeps. Hundred um, percent sweeps. Yeah, 100%. And, and this in, year they go against one of the best games, in my opinion, ever made. So in the same way that Resident Evil Two Remake did when it came out, mm. um, Remedy would have had the same. And and it's difficult to compare them, but for me, Alan Wake Two is a better game than, than Resident than Evil Two. Yeah, that's your <laughs> for me. I, I like I don't, have, I, I don't have the same I nostalgia for that series in the same way you do fix you know you know i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to hype you up I can mean, i um, you just did can i drop a controversial take i adore resident evil as a series uh resident evil 2 remake specifically and even i would agree that alan wake 2 is the better of the two wow Okay. I agree with that statement too. It is the better of the two. You're an idiot. Um, <laughs> so, game of the year. Up. Game of the year uh, is Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. What a phenomenal year. My oh, God. Ridiculous. There's Absolutely multiple ridiculous. games that could go onto this top six, and I'd be like, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, so for I'm sure. Be mad at it. What it a could year. be a top 20, and you'd be like, yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Been a, it's been a hell of a year for gaming. Uh, that was us going through the nominees of the Game Awards. Uh, top games um gives you a little insight on our conversation uh early january which is when we'll be talking about our game of the year i like to give everyone the christmas period because there's some people off to play some experiences maybe they wouldn't have got to and then we'll come back probably first week in january um and do our game of the year uh talk um boys i mean i'm super other than this i think we forget that the game awards are is a, is a production as well to be fair the awards are just a part of what we're going to get um on december 8th he says with a question mark yes um yeah, yeah. i think um, it might be december 7th 7th, 7th, 7th yeah. okay yeah. uh myself despawn crash uh will all be doing a watch along for the game awards it will be about three hours long we will be complaining making jokes and enjoying each other's company a lot matt won't be able to make it he's a uh, god go i'll bed. be sleeping it's it's good good um, but we will be doing a watch along over on the my xbox and me youtube channel and maybe hopefully have restream and sort of that by then so maybe the twitch channel and things of that nature uh no what's in your box this week nothing like that we've gone very very long and it is what it is um plug 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 get yourself out of here matt we got to plug this week really quickly you should subscribe to the youtube channel because watching our beautiful faces talk about this stuff is more entertaining than listening to our beautiful voices Beautiful is a subjective thing. Uh, Despawn, we got to plug this week. Uh, the Twitter, uh, twitter.com forward slash my Xbox and me. They gave me the password. I get to play with it now. <gasps> I'm going to start playing with it more. So Feels like a mistake. The Expect plug memes. section is meant to be to plug yourselves. I'll be controlling the my Xbox and me Twitter. <laughs> Crash. Uh, well, look, um, well, what I got to plug is. Uh, Hashtag uh, hail with the boys. Oh, fuck off. Hashtag hail with the boys. <laughs> I've seen a couple of tweets out there. I've yeah. seen it floating around. They don't exist. Nah, uh, it's been floating. I'll screenshot them. Sure. I'll screenshot them. Sure. Sure, I do. sure, I do. I'm not interested. I've told you this before. I'll tell you this again. Not interested until the community proves that they will show up and support these these with the boys and i am one of the boys i'm the boy by the way um until they prove it i'm, I'm not interested all right not interested so you can keep your hashtag and shove it where the sun Oof. don't shine um remember to drop a review make sure you hit the subscribe button kick your down down the stairs and steal our iphone until next time we'll love you leave you see you all later good boy <laughs>